you know, hurt is still hurt and hurt hurts. Welcome to Mother Daughter Connections, the show dedicated to educating, encouraging, and equipping moms to build lasting, meaningful connections with their daughters. I'm your host and mother daughter relationship personal trainer, Dr. Michelle Deering. My heart is to be of help to you. I believe that your relationship with your mom is the foundation for your future success, personally, parentally, and professionally. Now remember, even though I'm a licensed psychologist, I'm not your shrink on this show. I am, however, here to share my opinions and those of my guests. If you have concerns about your mental health, please seek services from a mental health provider in your local area. Now join me as we pause to consider today's topic. Well, hi there and welcome. I am so glad that you've joined me here today. You know, with it being the new year, I'm sure you've got some New Year's resolutions that you've made even if it's to not make any resolutions. But I see this year as being the year of you being yourself and entering into a new realm of freedom that you've not experienced beforehand. That's my desire and hope and wish and and intention for you uh, this year. Now, if you're a daughter listening to this episode and you're in middle school or about to enter or in high school, or if you're a mom who has a daughter in that age range, there's this thing called peer pressure. We've all heard it um, and we know what it is and we've encountered it at some point in time. Well, today, I just want to take a few moments to just share with you about peer pressure just a little bit differently. So what is peer pressure? Peer pressure is when someone has packed excessive external rules on you and those rules, whether they're unspoken or spoken, those kind of become this stressor in your life. Now, we've all heard the term stress, and stress is something that psychologically is experienced first before it's experienced physically. Psychologically speaking, stress happens when you perceive something external to you as being greater than what you can internally handle. And if you see the external thing as being manageable, then it won't take as much of stress or a toll on you, therefore not be as stressful to you as it may be to someone else who perceives that thing differently. So the psychology or the mindset or perception, how you're thinking about something, is happening first. The physical experience of stress happens second, and that can happen in terms of you physically feeling, whether it's anxious, you know, jittery, scared, or depressed, or tired, amongst other things. The thing about the stress of peer pressure is that it's something that you can prepare for so that you're not reacting but responding to it in the moment. So if you're a mom listening to this and you have a daughter, how can you help her prepare for peer pressure or become prepared to deal with peer pressure? Or if you're a daughter listening to this, how can you prepare yourself to deal with peer pressure? Well, there are five things that I think that you can do to do what I call peer pressure proof yourself. Okay, so let's go over those five things. The first of those five things is be present. And this one, I'm kind of gearing more towards and talking to you, mom, if you have a daughter who is on the verge of or is experiencing peer pressure. And if you are a daughter listening to this, it's something that you can do to help your mom, okay? Being present is something that your mom can do for you if you let her. You need to know that it's hard for your mom, any mom, any well-intentioned mom. It is so hard for us to sit off to the side and just watch you experience all that you're experiencing by yourself. Your mom wants not only to help you, but to protect you from getting hurt. That's her MO. And it can sometimes seem or feel like your mom just couldn't or doesn't understand what you're going through. And while yes, times have changed, The themes and the seasons of life stay the same. You know, hurt is still hurt. And hurt hurts, okay, no matter how you slice it, be it on the playground or in a social media setting, you know, being called names or not being accepted by your peers, that hurts. The key here is to allow a little room for your mom to be present for you. Let her in if it feels safe for you to do that. And if it doesn't feel safe for you to let her in, then tell her not only why it doesn't feel safe, 
but also what she can specifically do to help you feel safe enough to share with her what's going on in your life. Remember, she's been your age before you've been your age, and she has probably had some experiences that may be of help to you when it comes to handling peer pressure. So that first thing is be present. The second thing you can do to peer pressure proof yourself is to reality check the relevance of popularity. <laughs> what is popularity anyway? You know, it's this measure of importance and acceptance that's really decided on by a large group of people, otherwise known as the populace. And while there is a prevailing belief that, you know, if a lot of people say that something is good, then it must be good. Well, that's not always the case. You see, in the realm of psychology and social science, there's this phenomenon called groupthink. And groupthink is when people set aside their own real opinions and beliefs in order to conform to a group whose members have reached a consensus without actually engaging their own mind or thinking or critical reasoning. And they don't evaluate the consequences of things or think of alternatives. That's what groupthink is. For example, you know, if you got the popular people or the popular girls at your school, okay, and they're the in crowd group that everyone just wants to be part of. But if that group consists of girls who are pretty, but they're not really nice, but mean to those who don't look or act like them, then I just want you to pause to consider, are they being popular for the right reasons or qualities that you want to copy or not? Has the crowd or populace actually made a good decision about that group being helpful to you individually, if that's not something that you want to ascribe to in terms of being mean to other people? So in order to peer pressure proof yourself so that you can genuinely feel good about yourself regardless of the situation, it's really going to be important for you to reality check the relevance of popularity. You know, those people who think they're cool or seem at a distance to be really cool, you'll find out years later that they might not have been what they were cracked up to be. Now, the third way that you can peer pressure proof yourself is to open up to what's really up. You know, we have a plethora of reality shows out there and you know, they're scripted for effects and, and getting high ratings. So what you see on TV or on social media feeds is not like what real life is all about. Life, your life, real life doesn't really revolve around things like house parties and proms or popularity contests or he said, she said, news flashes. There is so much more to you, my queen in training. There's so much more to you and your life. What you like, what you don't like, what your hopes and dreams are, your uniqueness, your future. You have so much ahead of you that is more important than to let yourself get dragged in to what I call the dregs of drama. So to peer pressure proof yourself, you really need to open up to what's really up with you and what you want and what you hold to as being really important to you. So ask yourself, what do you want your middle school years, your high school years, your college experience to be like? Really pause to consider that and then go out and create it for yourself. You know, I'm thinking about... Uh, one of my twin daughters, when she was uh, seventh grade, um, she took a liking to a particular cultural group and started just learning more about that culture. And when she knew which high school she was going to be going to and found out that they didn't have any, they had a whole bunch of other cultural groups, but they had no cultural group for that particular culture. She decided the minute she hit the ground running in high school that she was going to go do whatever she could to start her own group regarding that culture. It took a lot of work on her part, but by the end of her first year of high school, she had that group up and running and it has continued even beyond the years since she's graduated. She wanted that experience and she went out and created it. 
you, my queen in training, can do the same. Create the experiences that you really, really want and that are important to you. Now, the fourth thing that you can do to peer pressure proof yourself is to own your innate value. Now, you've probably heard it said, you know, there's only one you. You are unique. You are special. You've even heard me say that, right? I really want you to sit with that for a moment and another moment more. You are unique and special. The implications of that truth that I really want you to grab a hold of is so profound and important. Never in the past, never in the present, and never in the future was there, is there, or ever will be another you in the annals of humankind, ever. You were born for a reason. Your life is making a mark and an impact on yourself and those around you. You are valuable and thus you bring value to every situation. Please, 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 if you remember nothing else that I've said today, please take in that fact and own that fact. Because when you do, then you will be able to combat the claws of any kind of comparisons that attempt to grab you and pull you down into the cauldron of peer pressure. So peer pressure proof yourself by owning your innate value. Now, the fifth thing that you can do to peer pressure proof yourself is to focus on your larger long-term goals. Now, if you don't have a larger long-term goal for your life, that's okay. I'd encourage you to just sit down and think about it and determine one. Just pick something. It could be long-term. It could be short-term. It doesn't matter as long as it's something that you've settled on as a goal. So for instance, for those of you who are thinking about going to college or maybe starting a business or making an athletic team or joining or contributing to some theater production or creating your own art form, whatever it is, focusing on your goal will help you not only make choices that will get you there, but will also help you be and keep more balance in your life in terms of your perspective about making sound decisions regarding the amount of energy and time and attention that you spend or don't spend mentally, emotionally, and physically on things that are considered peer pressure situations. So for instance, if you want to make an athletic team and you know that part of making that athletic team, whether it's varsity or at the collegiate level, making that team, and you know that your body is something that you're going to have to keep in shape and keep hydrated and healthy with proper food intake and stuff, then it's going to make it easier for you when you go and encounter folks who may want to imbibe or partake of substances that might harm their bodies. But you, as an aspiring and active athlete, might know, well, that's not for me. I have to take care of myself because this is my long-term goal. So that's what I mean by focusing on your long-term goal will help you navigate the waters of peer pressure. So in summary, the five things that you can do to peer pressure-proof yourself are, one, be present. Two, reality check the relevance of popularity. Three, own your value. Four, open up to what's really up. And five, focus on your goals. Now, if you'd like a few pointers on how to handle any specific situation, you can just reach out to me by emailing me at my email, which is dr.deering at curativeconnections.com with the subject line, daughter talk. And tell me briefly what's up and what you need help with, and I'll personally reply to your email with some tips. Again, that's doctor, that's spelled D-R dot Deering, D-E-E-R-I-N-G, at Curative, which is spelled C-U-R-A-T-I-V-E, connections, C-O-N-N-E-C-T-I-O-N-S dot com, and put in the subject line, daughter talk. I am really, really glad that you joined me here today. 
Remember, you are not alone in your daughterhood journey. And moms, you're not alone in your motherhood journey. I am in your corner. Healthy mother-daughter relationships are possible. They just take one connection at a time. Be encouraged, and I'll see you next week. You've been listening to Mother Daughter Connections with me, your host and mother daughter relationship personal trainer, Dr. Michelle Deering. Thanks so much for joining me today. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode, share this episode with a friend so they don't miss an episode, and download the resource in the show notes. Until next time, remember to pause to consider how you can connect intentionally so you can improve relationally with your daughter.